Yeah, film up. Welcome everyone to the film vault. That's it. So I'm Brian Bishop, your host for today. The annual revolt is the top five, or rather, bottom five uh, worst films we saw last year. Films that were released last year, we saw last year, and uh, we'll be discussing. Hopefully, putting to bed forever. Although something tells me one or two may come up again in the future. Who knows? Anderson, how are you? I'm fantastic, pal. How are you? Yeah, by the time people hear this, I'm good. Thank you. You'll be on the, you'll be on on the soil of Japan. Yes, it's true. Yes, wow. I'll be, uh, in uh, uh, God willing, you know, it's uh, we're we're standby flight flyers. We we fr- fly for free. There's a cost to that. You're not sure. You're not 100 uh, percent sure if you're going to make the flight. But that's the only way we can do an extravagant, crazy trip like this is to fly for free because. Like the, the tickets cost a lot there, guys. So yeah, no kidding. You're in a flight to Japan for free. I mean, the standby is worth the trouble for sure. So thanks to Giovanni for hooking me up there and uh, the wife and the, and the boy. But uh, yeah, we're very excited. I hope to come back with uh, new enlightenment and uh, ex- ex- stories. And honestly, it, I'm it's Japanese food's like my favorite food, kind of by far and away. So I I gotta imagine this is how a lot of people who are going to Italy feel when they're all excited to like eat Italian food. Yeah. In I Japan, in Japan on, they just call it food. When I went to uh, Italy, like I foolishly, because I'm not a giant Italian food guy, I foolishly, we we had an Airbnb in Venice. This is like 10 years ago. And we were there for three days. And I went to the local market and bought like frozen seafood and made oh, my you, food. You idiot. And, and I was like coming home. I'm like, wait, why did I do that? I should have probably eaten like the, the world-renowned Italian yeah. cuisine made in restaurants. Yeah, that's why most people go there. Fool. I'm a fool. One of the biggest selling points. So I will not be repeating that. Uh, but they, I heard that they have some good um, um, frozen fish fish sticks in the market, and I might microwave some fish sticks. Yeah, 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 that's a great Let's idea. Go. Hey, I'm gonna uh, go to Hawaii and just back. stay inside. I've already got the top five for next time where we're together. That's top what my brother did, home. Avery. My brother just yep. stayed inside the entire well, the one time he came on a family vacation to Hawaii <laughs> when we were kids. He stayed inside the entire time. Guess where my brother lives now? Hawaii. Guess where uh, he's living? Hawaii. He does not want to live. Wow. There. Yeah. Top five films set in Japan. Yes, next. Possibly, possibly. I think we have one from a listener too. Top five wedding scenes. Have we done that? Have we done wedding no. scenes? No. Uh, yes, we have because we both bemo- bemoaned the fact that we have not seen uh, uh, what is death and funeral for weddings and a funeral. One of those. We might have done that fairly recently, right? I can look it up. Uh, the, the film vault uh, Oscar pool winner, Aaron, he's, he's getting married soon. So. Uh, we we're going to do that for him, but uh, I, you know, I can't. Uh, if it's been a while, I'm fine updating it, of course. I would guess it's been two years now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe we could do wedding movies. Wedding Maybe. scenes was done 10 years ago. Look at that. 2014. Wow. Oh, no. Wow. Bad news. We updated, we updated it? it in 2018. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, Aaron, you hear that? What's Aaron's last name? Uh, Avery, we got we got another last name on that. Uh, you're really pulling the bait and switch on me here. Uh, button hook. Yeah. That's what uh, Brian would say. Button yeah. hooked. I, I can look it up. I can These find are it. good too. But yeah, Aaron, uh, Aaron Lauter. Lauter? Lauter? You know what though? Let's do we Aaron. Oh. What honeymoon scenes is on the table? Oh, how about that? party scenes on the table. Divorce yeah. scenes. What? Well, that, that's projecting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're jigsing him in that case. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's uh let's do this. Top five nuptials. Let's do this. Uh, Anderson's in a bit of a hurry today, so I eh, don't sell me out like that. All right, buddy. I mean, it's been a long, long I, day. I made Sundays you guys are big wait. Days I, I apologize. I apologize making you guys wait, but I've been doing comparative market analysis. I'm writing offers. Today is probably the busiest real estate day I've had since I started this, wow. and it's 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 crazy how Murphy's Law works. Here we are, uh, and this, it's St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, day. Yeah. and. Uh, locally, the LA Marathon's going on. Did that mess up your? Uh, your no, driving? I stayed. I stayed out here. I stayed. I didn't okay. do any kind of crazy. I just Smart. told them no. I had like five clients all want to like get together today, and I said yes to two. That's still a lot. Do you sell any houses? Do you sell any houses today? I mean, we 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 won't know until we you know submit our best offer and see uh, see how it goes. Uh, power's not in the buyer's hand. All right. Good luck, Avery. Uh, hit us with what the listeners have seen. Yes, a little uh, little fan fliction compiled by Mike Cole. Oh. Skadoosh it on Reddit. I took the Bella's advice and watched Blackberry after it got number one on both of the Valtes. It was Brand. good. Not great. Had some yeah, fun moments, but I think they overhyped it a bit. No, I don't think so. I don't think, uh, I don't think so either. Wrong. 
also i know this is a tv vault but if you guys aren't watching shogun you're missing out big time holy shit he is right on that mm-hmm. it's is on the money with that one c wills 23 on reddit saw eo capitano absolutely riveting film that puts into perspective just how incredibly lucky we are to be born in the united states mm-hmm. and we don't have to trek through hell just for a tiny chance at a better life abby kids miller <laughs> On Instagram, Kung Fu Panda 4 was ass. Can't wait to hear Brian's glowing review and how it made him cry. It wasn't that bad. Brian. Uh, Devin Miller on Instagram took my daughter Kung Fu Panda 4. She's at the age where every new movie she sees is her favorite movie. Mm. When I asked her how she liked this one, she said it was fine. That's oh, all you need to know. Oh, that's damning. That's damning with fame praise. Additionally, I saw Cabrini and it was better than expected. Not really a subject I was interested in, but it looked great and it kept my attention. Right. Zesty close That's dig. the highest uh, the highest compliment you can give a movie. Kept I, I, uh, apparently. Zesty close dig okay. 9053 on Reddit. I watched Ricky Stanicki, now streaming on Prime. It's terrible. The one funny scene is about 15 minutes in and it features John Cena doing a show where he covers a bunch of songs and makes them about baiting. I laughed quite a bit. However, my wife did not. Finally, Ismail Lemus on X saw Fight Life 2014. Dope. Snowtown Murders. Dope. Yeah. Dope. What what, what, what was the the last one there, Avery? The Killer. The The Killer. killer. Dope. And Savannah Smiles. Dope. Yeah, fuck the ass with Savannah Smiles. He was what, is, what is Fight Night or whatever that was? Right it was now? dope. It was Fight Life 2014. Fight oh, Life. Let's see. I couldn't tell you what that is. I That's imagine it. it's about fighting and life. Chronicles the daily lives of professional MMA fighters from all different levels over the course of one year. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks <laughs> for the tips. Hey, next week, we are going to be doing a throwback episode. In fact, it's going to be new to most of you because it is a episode that took place that was aired uh, over a year and a half ago only on Patreon, and it's a very esoteric uh, topic, but we had a oh, lot yeah. of fun. I went back, listened to it, uh, and did the master remastering that I like to do with the uh, with the old throwbacks. This is a Patreon-only episode that we did, which was Steven Spielberg sex scenes, also known as Speely sex scenes, and we had a good time with that because the man is shrouded in mystery when it comes to sex. And he when you pitched me the idea, I was furious. I said, I'm not participating in this. And it ended up being a a fruitful discussion of uh, the Shocking. man's An man's idea approach. I had turned out to I, be good. They, I'm giving you all the credit. <laughs> I mean, I give credit to me for allowing this to happen. But uh, yes, the uh, discussion of the man's approach to uh, love scenes was uh, more, than, uh, more than I expected. And then... Next week, I, I almost want to do it this week, but I'm going to save it for next week. I'm going to be talking about a documentary, a little pre-fliction, Brent, that mm-hmm. I, I searched high, I searched low. I knew that I, because time was compressed, and I knew that I, I was going to watch a, a film that I could bring to the program, and I was going to have to do so with my wife. My wife is very, very uh, particular about her movies. She's to the point now where she doesn't even like anything scripted. It's got to be like documentary, and if it's real true life crime, is that what they call it? Uh, all the better. True so, yes, uh, True crime. I spent probably a good 15, 20 minutes just searching Google, searching the the streaming apps, uh, and trying to find something she, A, a would want to watch, B, hasn't watched yet. Oh, and yeah. Boy, did I find something, guys. Ooh. And it's titled The Fire That Took Her. And I highly recommend this movie. It is a documentary. It is a bit of a procedural. Uh, it, it has some disturbing imagery. Uh, and it involves ver- burn victims, uh, a Ooh. burn victim. And you just got to be... I'm not big on burn victims. Uh, no one is. It's really hard to see. It's very heartbreaking. It's tough. Uh, yet you have to be prepared for that. And I think that it's worth the watch, even though there's some very startling imagery with the lead. Even victim. though the victims are hard to look at. You think it it's was, worth, a, worth was investigating? Lit on, lit on fire. So I'll be talking about that next week. And it's uh, definitely worth talking about. And it's kind of shocking that it wasn't like one of these movies that was like the flavor of the week, you know, how how these movies come out and everyone's like, Hey, did you see this? I'm, I'm sure that it made a little bit of a splash on the social medias, but I, it didn't have sticking power. No one's really talking about the fire that took her, which is uh, very surprising to me. It's very good. And Ryan, you'll like this. It's hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm in, but it's only seven, seven people actually gave it. Mm, you know what? Oh, it's okay. Brian right. will be number eight. Yeah, that's right. Serious. So let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's get into, uh, what we're doing here.
Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's talk about the films we've seen uh, in the last week. I, too, Anderson, tracked down a uh, documentary that was uh, on my Sundance preview from two years ago. I realized in looking uh, when we did our Sundance preview episode a few weeks ago, go back and look at the movies and some stick out as never have been released. I'm still waiting for some to see the light of day so that we may see them. And uh, in looking back, like, oh, whatever happened to that movie? Turns wow. out, all of a sudden, streaming. So I tracked down and I watched Second Chance. Second Chance is a 2022 documentary directed by Ramin Barani. If you know that name, he directed 99 Homes and uh, The White Tiger, which you never saw, right? Did not see that White Tiger. I want to. I, I Actually, they, they FedExed me a DVD copy. Oh, wow. And I never put it in the machine. No, they were motivated. Yeah, yeah. right. That's a solid film, uh, starring Second Chance, the documentary. Uh, it is a. It's this documentary has one of the best hooks I've ever come across in my years in the film vaults. It's about Richard Davis, a man who shot himself. What year is this, Brian? Twenty twenty two, Anderson. It's about a man named Richard Davis who shot himself. 192 times with a Jesus. air gun, right? Or the nope, nerve? Nope. Full on magnums. Hey, a second chance is not showing up at all. I mean, there's a lot of second chances, but it's not spelled two N D like the ordinal. Um, because I think there's a lot of films called second chance. Like the ordinal, like the ordinal Anderson. Yeah. I like the ordinal. I, mean, I got that. I understand. So look up two N D second chance, a second chance, 2011 would spell that way. Mm -hmm. This is bad, Brian. Oh, there it is. Richard Davis. Gotcha. Was he shooting himself in the same out. hole? So, no, Anderson, he shot himself 192 times. Not all at the same time. He is the founder. Oh, uh, he's using like, uh, hey, this is bullshit. Get he's out the here. founder of Second Chance, the uh, the the Bulletproof Vest Company. And they, he in, not invented, uh, they, they make sure not to say that, but he uh, innovated a new kind of Bulletproof Vest that hey, became Robert. the standard for police officers and military. And he was very successful for a long stretch of time. There was a great cold open. The film literally opens. He, he, you know, he filmed himself doing this. See, he's, he's at heart. He's an entrepreneur and kind of a scientist, I guess you would say. So, or at least an experimenter. He's lying, got the camera. He's out in the field. He's lining up with a, with what I can assume is a 44 Magnum, holds it to his chest, does the countdown, pulls the trigger. Boom. And then it got cut to black. And like, what what kind of over was that? That was amazing. So uh, the movie takes off from there. It would have been interesting if it was just about him and the Boulevard vest and the blah, 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 the machinations of the company. It would have been like the Tower Records doc, right? Like it would have been about just the there's ups and downs of this company, kind of a racist to rag story. Um, but the movie really sings. <laughs> Excuse me, because Richard Davis is such a bizarre, colorful, instantly unforgettable character. He is along the lines of Winnebago Man, where you're like, okay, the hook of this movie is this video that went viral and we're all, you know, following the who this guy is. But then he ends up being who he is. And you're like, I, I will never forget Richard Davis. Um the, he he was a, a Michigan, a northern Michigan um, militia type. Like it's a militia you, might find, you might find this hard to believe. He loved guns. He had a very proprietary sense of uh, justice and uh, what's right and wrong, uh, usually involving, oh, someone, you know, tries to kill a cop, just shoot him right there, just kill him. Like, no new due process, just kill the guy. So he's a bit of an eccentric, scatterbrained guy. He is uh, the law. You meet at various points his three uh, wives. Uh, I've not at <laughs> once, of course, three wives throughout his or life. He himself a thousand times at once, which I was I was very excited until I heard. And now, no, it was 192 over the course of years. Did they ever um, try to shoot him? Yeah, yeah. At one point, uh, there's a great scene where he has, he has his son, who now is working for the company, shoot him. Oh no, he's going to shoot the son who's wearing the vest, and uh, it becomes a 
will hear, won't he, can't hear, can't he do it? It's This is a great documentary. I forgot to actually look up, Avery, if you don't mind, could you look up the Rotten Tomatoes score for this for Second Chance uh, from 2022? I got to imagine it's very high. This is really well done. And, and this movie reminded me, weirdly enough, of the Lego movie in the sense that there is a scene at the end that, is quite the leap you're like oh boy and you can see it coming from a mile away and i'm like oh i see what they're doing here i know what they're doing i don't know if this is gonna work this is this is ambitious and it uh, got um quite dusty in the uh, bishop household when uh, when they pulled the scene off ramin barani is a master filmmaker i mean this is another really good movie from ramin so i highly recommend second chance looking forward it's to sitting it. at 91 and, and sorry, Avery, if you do one more favor, I usually write this down, but I forgot. Where is this streaming? I think I saw on Paramount Plus. I think it said I see. Sh I'm seeing Showtime and yeah. Paramount Plus. There you go. So if, if you have access to other one, you can also rent it. And I do recommend it. This is not three dollars. Uh, you will waste. This is a. This is a solid doc. This will. This will come up in uh, film vault lore uh, in years uh, to come. I highly recommend you see it, Anderson. and it's, it's good. Okay. Uh, you might find this hard to believe, Brian, but I have uh, hurled my face towards thousands of bees in my lifetime. Hurled your face towards thousands of bees. That's right. Thousands and that countless bees and other insects. Yeah. Should we make a documentary about it? No, probably not. Cause there was a windshield in front of me. So it protected me. Oh, I see. You were driving not, at the time. Not nearly as, uh, as impressive. You see? Yeah. That well, was grabby. In the 1970s, when he was doing it, that was pretty risky. Okay. All right. Yeah. How many animals he tested before he put it on, on, onto himself? You know what I mean? You get the sense that uh, Richard has a very loose relationship with what he can and cannot shoot. He there, There's lots of footage <laughs> of him uh, at, at, the, uh, at the, uh, the homemade range where he's just unloading on cans and soda cans and beer and bowling pins like the man's an, he's an enthusiast i'm picturing homer simpson when he was uh, into his gun opening yes <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah precisely all right uh, i saw a film it was a film that was uh recommended to me and uh you know what i'm still bugged i'm, I'm bugged by the the listener who says that uh, uh blackberry was a letdown i wonder if they watched the tv version which i still have not seen the three-parter yeah God, they're really, really trying to uh, lean into that. When I was looking, you know, I was spending more time on the apps, uh, on the on the streaming services than I normally do. You know, usually I just, it's, I'm not looking to engage and have a relationship with you, Netflix or Hulu or 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 uh, any of Disney. I just want to find out what I want to watch. I'm going to choose it, right? Because I've heard good things or I've read good things uh, or I'm just anticipating it. And then I want to go find it and push play. I don't want all the fucking in between i don't want to lay down and spend time with you uh a streamer just give me what i'm looking for okay uh and i was searching and doing all sorts of uh reading about you know different categories and whatnot some of these streamers don't even have a documentary category it's, it's nearly oh no, really and yeah and i can't tell you how many categories i came across where it's like bingeable in a weekend one night bingeable one day bingeable bingeable, bingeable. <laughs> and who the fuck picks it because it's like oh you know what hey honey and i yeah. i can't Binging HBO is tells me it's bingeable. Oh, yeah. just fucking light a spliff, lay down, order some takeout, and watch all day, guys, because that's what you were going to offer you here. Whether it's good or not, you don't even have to decide because you probably won't remember. All right. Anyway, sorry. I, I like that character. I like whatever character. That's a horrible character. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just, but I'm still annoyed that uh, somebody was underwhelmed with uh, Blackberry because Avery, you had it too low on your list. It was almost a three. Five. I told you that the number fives are all, they're all interchangeable for me. A and movie was that was it, on Brian's top five was, that, that was called Lola 2022's yeah. Lola. Used with 2023's Lola, which has Back to the assignments. Runtime, similar runtime. This is the first movie that has been assigned in quite some time. I have been curious about this one because Brian, uh, Bri Bri, uh, dug it so much at the time and, uh, so much so that it had sticking power and he continued to love it, uh, even into the vaulties and it was a number three number four what was it yeah it was a top, uh, top five yes yeah, i might that tell you this was a, little, a little too high let me talk about uh overselling so lola is a 2022 <laughs> movie uh directed by andrew legge leg 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 andrew Lege uh also wrote it it's uh starring emma appleton stefani martini and theodora 
Braboson Legay. Hey, it's a similar last name there to the writer. Hey. Look at that. Um, this is a science fiction movie. Brian, are you okay with that? Oh, this is the exact uh, yes, actually, of science uh, fiction. A few times, a few times, and I really uh, would sign off on the sci-fi. It's not the ordinal though. Uh, this There's movie no ordinals in the title, no. Is about a couple uh, sisters who live in peacetime. What is it? Uh, Germany over there? Where are they? Where are no, they're in England. They're in England, yeah, they're in England. And uh, they don't really get into the primer, primer machine that uh, the one very, very smart sister has built, but it involves a round television tube and a bunch of switches and knobs and whatnot, and it looks very uh, futuristic and, and complicated. And this doesn't take you to the future, but like Brian had said, when he flick fest this, it will tell you about what's going on in the future. It's almost like a TV set that lets you watch the news. Uh, yeah, the or radio. Yeah, that you can tune into the you know the future. You can tune in. Can you imagine if they tuned in? That that would have been interesting if they tuned into like uh, twenty twenty, and they're like, "What the fuck's going on with this Fox News?" Well, they were tuning in. What's going on like with Seventy. Right. Yeah, they were. They were getting inspiration from Bowie and whatnot, which was tune into the film vault. And that'd be a sweet. And um, it was. <laughs> Who are these idiots? So it's not long before this fun little device turns into real stakes, where they are co co collaborating with the uh, the British army and uh, the powers that be to thwart uh, upcoming uh, Nazi attacks once the war begins. And then they're um, flabbergasted and confused as to how they are affecting the future. And David Bowie uh, and, and how he is presented or not presented, as it were, because they are, they are having real implications on what happens, which is what happens in every single science uh, fiction movie involving uh, time travel that I think I've ever seen. So um, it kind of felt like a female imitation game uh, at times which yeah, is best possible sense, as well as uh primer um you know is movies very very ambitious and it's smart and it doesn't you know slow down for the slow ones amongst us uh it's it doesn't involve a lot of unnecessary details like you said the machine they're not going to waste time doing some pseudoscience the how they yeah, built it the point's not about that even though i would have liked to have seen the origin like what caused her to start building and like you know like they spent enough just enough time in primer primer to uh, I will call it primer for to uh, let us know that you know they were I think he was trying to do something else and he used like a washing machine and like they kind of stumbled across it. I, it was I like to I want to know a little bit, but that that didn't really hurt the film one way or the other. I think what hurt the movie for me was just that this was so obvious on on a shoestring budget, uh, fairly obvious that they made it during COVID times, where I'm pretty sure I mean I, don't quote me on that, but it seems like they purposely made something uh, that they could do on a small scale with limited actors. And it just like the lead didn't feel like she was of that time. And that was very distracting for me. This is also mm. shot black and white. That's the main inventor sister, right? Yes. The, she's pretty much the lead. And then the, the inventor sister who created this thing, who's antisocial, who just, uh, they have, they have different aspirations. One just wants to live a nice peaceful life and have a love interest world. The other one is all about science. And I think uh, there was a definitely a lesbian angle there, even though they didn't lean into that. But uh, I think that was definitely being suggested. And ultimately, like, I could see how ambitious it was. And I appreciate that. And it kind of even got trucking for me a little bit more in the third act. But yeah, it took a while to get going for me. But once it did, I thought it found a groove. I, I just, it's, it just felt a little too rent for me to really sign off on and love. There was too many distracting things. And one of the problems that I had with it is it was almost like found footage. I, I think it was supposed to be found. It's, footage. Yeah, I think it is. It's very indie. And they're shooting like everything on these super eight cameras. And uh, I think that's what lost me a bit too, was it was, it felt very artsy at times. And so everyone's playing right to the camera and breaking the fourth wall because they're making home movies. And it's just, it was, there was too much mugging for the camera and, uh, to, I don't want to call it weak acting, but it just, it, I could tell they were acting throughout, especially the mm -hmm. ones who's very beautiful and very nice, but she seemed like she was of today, not of yesteryear. They didn't seem to talk like yesteryear much. And, uh, I was never, I was never really transported. That said, this movie, um, really swung for the fences and I guess it hit for some people. Yeah. It landed for me. I do agree though. I thought the one unnecessary construct was the found footage angle it was like this could have been narrative film just played straight but uh for me the stuff that worked the third act really i thought was awesome uh, i'm not gonna hear what happened but like anderson alluded to the uh the the consequences of time travel or effect in the future uh come home to roost yeah and actually played with in an interesting way i mean that was a talk about this movie being 
like inspired and smart and clever. Uh, they really did play with that science and and it was a, a, a well constructed script for sure. I just don't know if it needed to be shot the way it was. Even the black and white was kind of unnecessary. I guess it matched the um, source really? that they leaned on heavily, oh. but uh, yeah, it was just uh, for an hour and 19 minutes and with everything going on, I did still feel the boredom. And I think that that's because of the budget. When you have a budget like that and you're trying to stretch it into a, a narrative feature, uh, there is some stuff that could have been cut still. I think. Yeah, it did. It did feel like a drag for me too. It, it didn't feel like 90 and I, I wish it had felt a little snappier. It was less. It was, it was 79, just under 80 minutes. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I was kind of like watching my watch going, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? It was a uh, number of what three for you, Brad? It was four or three, probably. Oh yeah. Hmm. yeah, I liked it a lot. No poor things though, evidently. I you know the I, I told you my clever better. reason for leaving it off, but uh, for me that what I thought was just the tremendous third act forgave a lot of the minor quibbles like the black and white and the 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 the, the found footage angle. So yeah, it does tie together nicely. Thank you for assigning that, Brian. I'm glad I saw it. <laughs> An ignominious way to get back to assigning films. I don't know if you have to use that word. I've used ignominious and ordinal. Why the ordinal, Brian? It's a word. It was third the ordinal. It's third the ordinal. But, 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 but what do you think it means? What do you think? Ordinal? What do you think? What do you think ordinal? Think, what do you think ordinal? Don't, don't do what that. Do you, what do you think ordinal means, Andy? It's it's a little easier when I'm across from you because I <laughs> can actually expend some energy by restraining myself from punching you. But here, I just, I, I'm, I'm left with my own device. There's nothing. Oh, you have this impotent rage. Mm -hmm. What do you got? What else? What, what, what other movie you got? Uh, what do we got? I, two other movies. You want to do, uh, oh, the one that you, uh, you took the wind out of my sails. I was so excited to bring to the show Polite Society. And uh, only to find out, and it's like, I, I flicked fast this six months ago. Yeah. I was so sad. The movie well, that I wouldn't have even flick fast or even watched all of, but like you know, critics loved it. So I'm like, eh, I want to make sure that I'm bringing it to the program, even though it wasn't from wasn't for me. Oh, I, I found this very high on the fun scale. Uh, Polite Society is a 2023 film directed by Nita Manzur. It is her his her debut film, uh, starring Priya Kanzara, Ritu Arya, Nimra Bucha, and Akash Akash. Akshay Kana. It I might is, be gone uh, for 45 seconds, but you won't even notice. Keep talking. No one ever does. 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. You can stream this on Amazon Prime or you can rent it if you so choose. Like I said, high in the fun scale. Uh, this is sort of in the vein of Get Out or They Clone Tyrone. Hey, Avery, you remember this profession at all? Yes. I think this is the, the Pakistani sisters in yes. the UK. Yes, there are a couple of sisters in the UK, and the younger sister is maybe high school aged. And uh, it turns out we find very early, I think in the opening scene, maybe that she is uh, very into karate and stunts and martial arts. She she would love to be able to pull off a, a full flip, and uh, she is a self styled martial artist, loves stunts, wants to be a stunt woman in the in the film industry. Her older sister is a bit of a ne'er do well. She's kind of a, a, a mope, you would say. You know, she's kind of hanging around the house, living at home with mom and dad. Uh, but the younger sister loves her, despite the fact that she, the older sister can't quite get out of her own way. And uh, through a series of events, uh, there is obviously in, in that culture the idea that uh, relationships are often set up through family members, older you know, parents, whatever. Um, the older sister, gets invited to this sort of uh, speed dating thing, you, I guess you would say. Like a wealthy mom wants to set her son up with a nice girl from the neighborhood. And so they invite all the single women from the neighborhood. And uh, wouldn't you know what the son goes for the older sister. They develop a relationship. However, the younger sister is convinced something is afoot. Something's not quite right. And uh, I'll leave it at that because there is – hilarity and weirdness and bizarre. a lot of fight scenes. what's that a lot of fight scenes a lot of fight scenes a lot of uh, there were times when i was waiting for this to like pull back to reveal it was a dream sequence or so or something and it didn't do its credit it didn't do that it played it as straight as you can um 
uh, for this kind of material. Anderson, I was saying it's in the vein of like Get Out or they clone Tyrone where it has such a bizarre like plot that like goes places. You're like, oh, it's not going to it's not going to do that. Oh, Ready or not. It. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, although I would say a lot more fun, a lot more kinetic action, and not just because the girls in the karate and mixed martial arts, um, like it actually moves with a fun sense of purpose. Colorful movie. I, I really enjoyed uh, Polite Society. A little too much uh, to, style for, for my taste. It was oh, I loved it. style and it was con constantly, it was like a little too much flair. I mean, too it, much. Yeah. Like, it's okay if you really go over the top and it's like something I've never seen before. Like you see with like RRR or Fury Road or something like that. But when they're just doing things that I've already seen before, but it's like, look, we can do it too. It's like, ah, I don't care. So, okay. I, in retrospect, I see similarities with this and Rye Lane, not obviously in the action aspect, but in sort of the style in which they're made. And I don't know. I don't, I don't see this being exceptionally better or worse than a movie like that. Oh, I like Riley a whole lot more because I like the characters more. And I think that the comedy was much more punchy for, for my sense of humor. So the comedy in Riley Lane, no pun intended, is more wry. This is a little more broad, no pun intended, uh, but it's a, little, it's a little more broad uh, humor. But I still, it worked for me. Hey, uh, while we're talking about uh, nothing of the sort, let's talk about appearance. Let's talk about what we're saying. Uh, seeing first of all, Avery uh, with the sleeveless. Uh, yeah, I was shirt. gonna say it's Sun's quite like warm in my room. Old choice. It is now. It's getting hot in here. Quite warm. And then uh, Brian, talk to me. I'm assuming that uh, I, I hope that that's your seven year old daughter, really. Or eight oh no, old? she's away for the weekend. Okay. She's seven. Oh, she is away for the weekend. So what's going on with your head? So I, I I went to down to the on down to the fair. No, Tessa is, uh, well, he loves arts and crafts and she loves painting and she loves face painting. So uh, while Christy was working on her uh, newsletter, which I recommend everyone, uh, Tessa's like, Daddy, can I paint your face? I think mostly because I have a large canvas. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing at my bald, bald, yeah. my bald uh, visage. And mm -hmm. uh, she uh, went ahead and painted a couple of leprechauns. Or a couple of leprechauns. Hey, you're a, you're, your school, your kid's school, uh, they they do the leprechaun trap? Like, they, they demand it like it's an assignment. No, no. However, we did it of our own volition. It's an assignment. In fact, uh, we even were allowed to take it one day off of homework to work solely on the uh, leprechaun trap. Pretty oh. good deal. When I was a kid. Atticus must have loved that. I mean, we, we heard about leprechauns and of course they had the cereal that we enjoyed, but uh, we weren't like, you know, led deep and like hard into believing that these things are real and you can capture them. And if you do capture them, you get all their fucking gold. And that's what I've been dealing with like all week is this goddamn leprechaun trap and him hoping to get the fucking leprechaun so that he can get the goddamn gold. And uh, me knowing that we're just setting them up for a, a abject failure. And last night I was in bed and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to go uh, mess with the leprechaun trap and make it look like the leprechaun got stuck in the oblique, yeah, but wheeled out, saved himself. So I had to make a bunch of mess coming out. It, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. It, it is. Feels, and it, it feels a, a lot more active you? than Santa. It feels like there's a lot of Santa, you got overt a deception there. The boot coming out. It's yeah. kind of elf. It's kind of elf on a shelfy. But you get something from Santa. You can get nothing but failure with the uh, leprechaun thing. They didn't really yeah. think it through, you know? There's no payoff. Yeah. Literally. I mean, he he seemed to like it. All that said, he seemed to enjoy it and he was excited, but not really that crestfallen as to not getting last year we made one and the uh, leprechaun broke right through the uh Carp look at it. I'm actually oh, I'm actually weird. gonna look back at this very fondly and I'm I'm very happy that the <laughs> I just wanted the bitch for a minute. Dad of the <laughs> year. Happy. Yeah. Last year, like we made a box that like fell on top of him and oh it did. But the leprechaun, little prick that he is, he he got out. He busted through the uh the cardboard. That's good. Cartoon style. Fun. You gotta mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you gotta uh, complete the illusion. Does it give you a pyrite to use as uh, as bait? A what? Don't now pyrite, the, pyrite. Uh, the the fool's gold. Well, that's what we. I think that's what I did in elementary school when we were doing. Not the, Pyrex, uh, the Andrews and Pyrex. Are you young enough that you actually went through this as well, Avery? I. It wasn't as intense as this. I think it was like one year for one St. Patrick's Day. We made like little traps, but I think it was all under the guise of, "This is nonsense." I don't know if it was ever pitched as "This is real." I think it was, "Oh, this is a fun imaginary thing." I don't love his teacher, so I sent him in with Ublik because he had to. <laughs> nice. This will be fun. Like he said, Ublik, and I'm like, no, dude, we're not making Ublik. This stuff is so... We're not doing that. You got to take this into class. He's like, yeah. I'm like, let's do some Ublik. Let's do it. <laughs> I saw a film, Brian. Yeah, tell me. It was uh, released in 2023. 
It was uh, up for all sorts of awards and had a very nice run at the uh, on the uh, festival circuit. Fast X. It was a cops. This movie is called Fallen Leaves. Fallen Leaves came highly recommended from a number of listeners. And I found it on a number of people's top 10 lists, a number of critics' uh, top 10 lists. Uh, so I'm like, I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to see this Fallen Leaves, which I did. Directed by... Feels like, feels like a foreign film. A Aki Karasamaki? I like this so far. Aki Karasamaki. He wrote it and directed it. I just, yeah, it's a, it's a, Aki's a dude. Yeah, he's a guy. There he is. Certain type of guy, too. Holding a cigarette, not lit, but holding it. He looks startled in his IMDb picture. So Fallen Leaves is a... Um, it's a romantic comedy, I guess, and it takes place in Helsinki. And it's hard to tell if it's modern time because things aren't uh, that modern in Helsinki. But this is almost... Is that back- true? Is Finland a backward country? In this deep part of uh, Helsinki that they live in, in this, in this city, apparently, because... Or maybe it's a throwback. It's hard to tell what the year is. Perhaps it's supposed to be like the 90s. It's hard to tell. They never really... I guess there's no cell phones or anything. I always thought Helsinki is a major metropolis, but oh well. I know you know, it's a big city, but I, as far as this this movie goes, like it's all very simple, oh. straightforward, not a whole lot going on, right? Uh, but I, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think that this was a for uh, um, a period piece. I think this is mid '90s, and I just didn't pick up on it. Oh, what an idiot! I'm glad we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> they watched it. They went to the cinema, Brian, and they. They watched a movie that was a movie that I had not seen, but I did look up and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that movie. And it was with, uh, it was a zombie movie with uh, Bill Murray and somebody else. Zombieland? It was not. It was not Zombieland. It was a different one. A zombie with Bill Murray that's not Zombieland. That's right. That's right. So, uh, oh, the Ukraine war news is throughout. So, of course, I thought that it was, uh, um, this is this is something that contemporary because I believe it is because it's all about the, the Ukraine war is occurring in the back. The backdrop. Fair enough. Every time a radio or t- television set is turned on, but I don't think there's any smartphones. Anyways, it's a very particular movie. It's a very uh, uh, independent movie, and uh, it's about two lonely people who stumble across one another. And uh, she works at like a market, dealing with lots of meats. It opens up with her with the meat. It almost it almost has a uh, Napoleon Dynamite vibe to it. And then um, he's uh, he's an alcoholic. Uh, which definitely comes into play for how his life is lived. And they finally find each other, but then the old serendipity thing happens where uh, one thing leads to another and he doesn't doesn't have what he needs to get back a hold of her. A dog comes into play at one point. And ultimately, there's some funny lines in this movie. Uh, I can see how people would really like it and be proud of thinking it's the funniest movie. Or not even proud, but it's just like, hey, it's my kind of it's my kind of humor. You know, it's not your kind of humor. Um, there's his friend who sings karaoke, who's obsessed with the way that he comes off age wise, uh, was funny, had some lines, um, that were good. Uh, but ultimately the way that it was lit just really bothered me. And I re- had a really hard time just why, cause it just looked like student film from beginning to end. And maybe that's what he was going for, but it was just like, it wasn't well balanced. It looked like huh. daylight film being used for everything. I mean, daylight uh, lights, it was just bright and white and had that, that ugly, like just one light shining on it. It, it was not for me. I, I, I enjoyed it a few times, but ultimately it was way too slow. Didn't care about the characters enough. Had a couple funny moments, but not enough for me to hang my hat on. So maybe I'm just not bright enough. Fallen leaves did not land for me as it was. So here's an interesting tidbit. Number one, uh, the IMD, IMDb plot description for what it's worth, called it modern day Helsinki. That said, uh, apparently I'm reading on Wikipedia it's the director's third in a planned trilogy. The first two films were in 1986. And no, no sorry, this is the fourth of uh, three films that were in 86, 88, and 90. So perhaps this was planned to be a mid 90s movie and it was done in this style. Now, forgive me, I'm not a, a war buff or a history buff. Uh, was the Ukraine uh, in a skirmish or war at some time during the 90s as well? I'm going to sound very ignorant and say probably. Because maybe that's what they're going well, for. It's really changed. I don't know. Russia was, I mean, the Soviet Union was breaking up in the early 90s, right? Yeah. It was the late So 80. Ukraine became an independent nation. 91 was it when the, the wall fell. 
feels 9091. Yeah. But maybe. I don't know if I don't I, think I, I'm making an ass myself. Yeah. Russia didn't come and immediately take them, try and take them back. I don't think, did they? I don't know. Yeah. We don't, we're not, uh, we're, we're Western educated over here, right? Okay. It, it, Soviet Union fell in December 91. Yeah. So that happened in 91. But did like Russia immediately say, no, 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 you're staying with us, Ukraine, and like start doing what they're doing right now? I don't no. know. They may have said that, but I don't believe there was uh, proper military uh, operations. But right. I could be wrong. I'm a stupid I wanted, American. I wanted to like this one. Then the, here's another thing that I'll be completely 100% honest. Um, the first half that I watched before I gave up was with an SRT, which is uh, the, the subtitle. And it was drifting badly. And it was like two, three seconds off. And I know that that can really ruin a, uh, a viewing. Um, and, and then I got it fixed after um, some digging and and I got the SRT that actually lined up better and I did like the second half. So maybe it was too late and maybe it's not the film's fault. Maybe I would have been able to get on board and enjoy myself a little bit more had it not been ruined with the uh, mm -hmm. bad uh, subtitles. But just I, I could see actually it wasn't even drifting. It was before. So I saw everything they were going to say two seconds before they said it, which kind of ruins any kind of like surprise. Suspense, you're pre-cogging. Yeah, I was pre-cogging throughout. Made me feel really smart though. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I know what's happening here. I could see some people really liking this movie. Um, I just think they might really love Wes Anderson too. So if you like Wes Anderson, you might like this. Not even that it's a Wes Anderson movie, but it's kind of. So you have to be a genius to like this. I think that's what it is. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. I think you have to be really smart to like this. Hey, hey can I, bring? Oh, good. I can tell you to a, to a listener, there's like five listeners that said, uh, you got to watch Fallen Leaves and all of them are, are huge cinephiles. So maybe it's just uh, beyond me. Can I bring a third film to the uh, program? I mean, if you have to. I was always planning on it. So, you got to talk about being, you know, cuddling with you. Oh, oh right. yeah. I forgot about that. You want to do a better with being or you want to do a third movie? Uh, should I save the movie for next week? What is the movie? Uh, it's a, it, I'll tell you this. It's an almost awesome movie. It's 90% mm -hmm. of Rotten Tomatoes. I had <laughs> never heard of it. I watched it on the plane on my uh, flight uh, home from London and Paris, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a delightful little surprise. Almost awesome in the fact that it's not a five star, but this is a solid, enjoyable surprise. Can I, how about you say the title of the movie, and then we can talk about it? I will it. not. And then people could watch it if they want and hear you talk That's about true. it. That's true. That's really fair. Okay. I had never heard of, maybe you had, Dreamin' Wild. Dreamin' with an apostrophe, Wild. Mm -mm. And any, any, maybe on a plane. Any, but yeah, I, so stars Casey Affleck and Walton Goggins, Bo Bridges. Yes, uh, terrible what? poster. Yeah, bad bad poster. I saw that. I saw this listed on a plane, like to Panama or something. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was a bad poster, and I was like, I don't know what this is. And I looked it up, and I'm like, well, apparently people like it. And I had I had fucking 24 hours to kill literally on this plane. So I was like, well, dream, dream while I've already watched Bo's afraid. So dreaming while it is. All right. Next week, we will talk more. Mm -hmm. dreaming wild. Uh, you want to take a quick break here there, Ave? Let's do it. Adjust your settings. Everyone. If you want to catch up with and follow along with dream and wild, it is a slow, quiet movie, very effective, great characters, but uh, you're not going to have your socks blown off. You're going to have your socks gently lifted off and mm -hmm. just drops. Peeled down. It looks a little like uh, that heart movie that uh, Jeff Bridges did. What was it called? Oh, uh, Crazy Heart. Crazy Heart. Was, was that like it? Crazy Heart. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, Crazy Heart might have been a little better. Mm, that doesn't say anything. That's a, I like. That's, I like that's... Crazy Heart. All right, we'll be right back. We're back. Top five time in a moment. But first, Anders and the people have spoken, mm -hmm. and they want. Better with Bean. I, I was willing just to, just to throw it out the window this year. I was like, you know, it didn't work on the Oscar Locks episode where it normally would fit, but we ran, ran out of time. Uh, I've been admonished in the past by people close to me in my life um, for doing on the Vaulties. It was whose opinion thought. you respect and hold in high esteem. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. For example, like uh, maybe like a Mike Carano type would have had such a bad reaction to me doing better with being in the Walties, but apparently it wasn't worthy of that episode. So I learned my lesson. So here we are. Top five worst movies of the year. And what better time to do it than here's how to suggest 
these movies get a little better. Actually, these are mostly all good movies. They can get a little better if we add the actor Michael Bean to these films. And who and, is that for those who don't know, Brian? Oh, Avery. <laughs> who, who's Donald Trump? Who's Jesus Christ? <laughs> like, uh, there's certain things where you don't have to explain. Them. Uh, all right, I'll do the bit. Michael Bean is a uh, celebrated actor. Um, you might know him as the star of The Terminator, star of Aliens, star of Tombstone, star of The Rock. What's that? He's not a star of any of these movies. He's in the yeah. sphere. I would argue that any film he... Oh, yeah, The Abyss. He's any a star film, of the victim. Any film he appears in, he is the de facto star. Gotcha. Makes sense. Understood. You know, like, any game LeBron James, like, appears in, he's all of a sudden the best player. We get it. Sure, there's a hockey comp for this. Mm -hmm. We get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, for example, like, a movie like... Let's just take Knock Up the Cabin, right? So... In knock, that movie, knock, knocked up the cabin. Knock at the cabin, the M Night Shyamalan film from earlier last year it was decent. Could be a little better if, like, so the couple in the cabin. You have to have seen this movie to get your no. Okay, it's a I'm... gay couple. It's just like in the in the original. Uh, we're gonna change it to Michael Bean, of course, as one of the uh, married men, and uh, let's make his partner. I don't know, slightly younger, bald. Uh, maybe a radio personality. They're out there. Mm, maybe. This is the problem. <laughs> this, this is where we're running into issues is you can't, you can't get handle your bean. Tell us what is going on because you're so delighted and tickled with yourself. Why did you spill your bean, Brian? Sorry, that's on my throat. Um, yeah. There's a, I really have something in my throat. There's a pain right. the <laughs> What? Sorry, what? Go ahead. Oh, I, I was in the middle of my, my, my segment. So being. These are the kind of so things being, that I, like later that I, I will tell Jillian about this and I'll be angry about it. And she'll just stop and she'll go, she'll say this. Then she, it happens all the time with you. She'll go, you love him. I'm like, yeah, he's all right. I feel like that's the problem. That makes it worse. I know. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> my <jo> <laughs> Jesus my Christ. Wife, my wife just walked in the room. What a dumb so way to die. If you were to drop room. dead while trying to do this, this I would talk might, about it. This bit might be dangerous for your health. Mm -hmm. What an ignominious way to go. Is this why you're going to rehab, Brian, the physical rehab? So you well, can yeah, survive totally. doing it better with me. Does Christy know about <laughs> this bit? Is this the first she's hearing of it? Get my daughter out of here. Yeah, please get the other uh, out. <laughs> I can't do this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have lots of concepts. But... Okay. Yeah. Told them to respect the show <laughs> and to get the respect fuck out. the process. Yeah. So but... being in... By... So being in his bald bride, they're painting, they're painting the walls white. They're just having a great week. A great, a great weekend alone when Dave Bautista shows up and start to terrorize them, right? Mm. Only in this version, they invite Bautista in and he's made part of the <laughs> the goings on. And then they, they make love the whole weekend. Well, there, there you go. That's how to make it better with me. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. So like a movie was like... A, uh, or was that number, was that one? What are you talking about? There's not any order. I'm just going to name okay. a few films. Okay. So, like, for example, The Holdovers. I, wait, how, not to belabor this and stretch this out any further than it needs to be stretched out, pardon. But uh, how do they win over Batista? I, do they just, do they entice him with pleasure or was there money exchange? I mean, how do No, no. Don't make it tawdry. That's what I'm doing. And I'm sorry. No. So I'm the asking. pure animal magnetism. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay so for example the holdovers good movie we all like the holdovers it could be a little better if the private school teacher was played by michael bean and his young rebellious bald student are forced to spend the holidays alone together when a freak blizzard traps them in their remote boarding school with uh and there's uh no heat there's no, no heat, heat. 
Got to cuddle. Yeah. It's, it's very cold. Yeah. So well, let's just say they, they figure out how to warm things up. It's a matter of safety. Yeah. It's a matter of survival. So uh, this young student and this teacher, uh, are there lessons learned, Brian? You know what? Don't be, again, don't, don't cheapen this experience for me. Okay. Do you know how close that came to doing society of the snow? Yeah, hopefully close enough that you did but it. That would be obvious. And um, no, I'm not going to. Not really. Not who, gonna do, who? What? Who eats who? All right, Society of the Snow. <laughs> so, uh, again, a Paraguayan soccer team, mm. uh, rugby team, crashes in the uh, Andes. It's cold. It's snow. Everything is destroyed. In this version, there's only two survivors. The coach, played by Michael Bean, and uh, his star player, who happens to be bald and uh, a little bit younger, obviously. And uh, they, they're, they're, you know, not much changes. I should point out that not much changes in most of these movies. I, I, yeah, I'll add a detail here or there, but uh, they get hungry. Mm. I mean, <laughs> there's <laughs> what? Sorry, somewhere throat. Ah, sorry, that's better. There's plenty of eating, but <laughs> plenty of eating. We don't lose the eating part. But no one's getting full. So yeah. <laughs> yes, they're still starving. Ah, yes. Even though they're eating throughout. <laughs> what are they eating? Whatever they can. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm imagining them sauntering down to the other half of the plane to try to get the Corolla podcast on the radio. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> they say, get it on. Got to get it on. And then there you go. So. Okay, a movie that Wait, I think they, we were all. Do they catch? Do they catch the coach and this young bald uh, player? No, no. What happens is, do they catch them what, making what, radio contact and then breaking the radio? Why would you do that? That was their only chance to get out of here. You're close. Hmm. What well, What happens is, um, the 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 the, the plane or the helicopter uh, spies them. It's like, oh God, thank God, they're survivors. We found the wreckage, and they choose to stay out there. Hence, the society of the snow. They're like, no, no, we're good. Like, no, you've been rescued. Like, no, we're fine. We're good. We all the all the food we need. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, with the food again. It's it's yeah. it's, yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's an all you can eat buffet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ryan. A film we were all maybe disappointed by uh, to some degree. Maybe not Avery. I think everyone liked Maestro. But Maestro could be a little better if we replaced. Bradley Cooper, who was very good, nominated for Best Actor, with Michael Bean playing the legendary composer, Leonard Bernstein, uh, played by Michael Bean in this case. He cares for, we're going to tweak the story, the love of his life is not is not Carrie Mulligan. Hmm. It's, a, it's, it's a young, bald protege. And uh, uh, wouldn't you know, the bald protege ends up battling cancer, fighting for his life. Hmm. And... Uh, Let's just say this version has a happy ending. I don't, I don't, I'm, am I lost? Why am I lost? I thought you were going to play his nose. No, don't be ridiculous. I mean, that was right there. I thought maybe you could. Yeah, it was right. That's why I didn't do that. I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to bring happy. all the honor to this, uh, this time honored bit. Okay. I respect the bit. Okay. If you cannot taste the juice, then the juice does not flow with it. <laughs> Wait, what? What was that joke though? I missed the missed the joke. There's a happy ending. Yeah, this version of the film has a happy ending. Oh, like like a massage. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever it means to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm leaving it open. Um, I mean, that one didn't have that sad of an ending because he he ended uh, very rich and uh, was able. Well, to Oh, he was to- alone oh. and his love died. Mm-hmm. We can't, we can't, we can't have that. I think they'd still end up at the same uh, that same nightclub, though. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yes. You know what? That's right. He goes there to, not to mourn, but to celebrate. Yes. So a film we all liked, uh, Poor Things, I think can Mike. actually be improved, well, to varying degrees. I did miss my top five. Uh, but I think it can be improved a little bit um, if, uh, okay, the recent recipient of a radical brain procedure, uh, this time a young bald man, <laughs> is whisked away to Lisbon by a rapacious caddish lawyer, played by Michael Bean. Uh, uh, over the course of uh, their adventure, uh, the happy couple engages in copious amounts of furious jumping. 
And that's the whole film. <laughs> Finally. Mean, much more you could have done with that one, Brian, with the uh, the brain transplant. and. No, that was it. I was disappointed in the poor things one, to be honest. Oh, I'm sorry. Can so, I make it up to you? With was, the... you? All you did was you just changed the two parts. You just you just recast it. Can I break it up to you with uh, something we've we toyed with on the show? Salt bean. Yes. Salt okay. bean. I'm gonna say this. Very little has changed. Uh, mm -hmm. There's still a uh, chance. Uh, there's still a chance meeting at Oxford, mm -hmm. but it's between a, uh, a let's say a grad student, a little older than Barry Keoghan, maybe a bald grad student, and his professor. Let's let's make him play by Michael Bean, and uh, Michael Bean uh, is the heir to the uh, Saltburn uh, fortune. They uh, they come close. There's still a, there's still a bathtub scene. There's still a gravesite scene, but. Uh, uh, the final iconic dance number is now a duet. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes on for 20 minutes. 20, 20 minutes. Well, that's in the director's cut is much longer. Oh, I see. Well, a lot more made it to the, uh, the <laughs> little end product. I didn't want to be indulgent. I'm imagining in this one, Christy meets a terrible end so that you can be with Mr. Bean. Who's Christy? And oh, I she, ask you, I she mean, dies I, off screen while watching some of these, uh, you know, Oscar baby movies and some of the best movies we see uh, in the entire year. How, how many times in an average awards what? prestige film are you sitting in the dark theater thinking this could be in the running for, for better with me? So the answer to that question, every film I see, mm, it's in the running. That's what I think about the most. That's that's how you approach every movie. Like, all right, <laughs> let's see what this Lola can do for being. I had a lot of of also rings. Cocaine Bear almost made the list. Who? Co cocaine, cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear. Oh, I I have one for Dean Scenario. What would Cocaine Bear? Yeah. Yeah, there would be a double entendre with Bear, and there'd mm -hmm. be a lot more cocaine. <laughs> a lot more. Okay. A lot more. What was the other one? Uh, Dream Scenario. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I don't know. Tell us, tell us more about that. How's that go? Um, um, and then that one, Michael Bean would play a college professor who, uh, unsurprisingly, unsurprisingly, is Michael Bean begins to show up at everyone's dreams. Mm -hmm. um, there is still an awkward love scene with the uh, smitten assistant. Uh, only we're uh, recasting the assistant. I mean, I'll put a call out for you know, shaved head. You know, uh, slightly older. But uh, yeah, they 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 they, they consummate the relationship. Copy that. But yeah, that one's half baked. So I didn't. Uh, I was hoping that there'd be dreams involved. But uh, yeah, he he starts showing up in everyone's dream. That's Michael Bean. I, I imagine know. everyone dreams about it anyway. <laughs> you imagine that? <laughs> I, I got to imagine. All right. Woo! All right. Thanks, thanks right. for tuning. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. How many people tune in just for that, and then now they're out? I I will. I got to imagine the number is in the zeros. Yeah. <laughs> People like their beef. They're no, beef. no one likes it. People like it. I like Brian it. likes it. I like it. And that's the most important thing, Avery. Thank you. Brian really. All right. It. Thank you for indulging me. Time now for the worst films of the year. We take a quick break here, or do we uh yeah, I, I, go, we let's go right into it? Quick quick break. You want to take a break for that? We should, yes. I mean, I gotta cleanse my palate. All right. Break time. Come back with bad movies after this. We're back. Time to talk not good movies. Uh, I don't know about you, Anderson, but y'all of mine are pretty bad. Even my number five, which would be the best of my list, uh, is, is yeah, disappointing at best. All right. What, what was you your criteria? Uh, I had to be very, very keenly disappointed in them. And uh, that had so to come out in 2023. Wasting my time mm -hmm. in 2023, yes. Those are all. I, adds up. I mean, I like writing this list. I don't like saying the list. I just feel like a bit of a dick. You know what I mean? I agree. It feels like, well, Takes no, I, I picked, I picked films that were very large budget, tentpole films that uh, were very bad. I tried to. I well, tried no, to I take it back. Oh, no, I take it back. See, see, we're going to have crossover and it's going to hurt. Is it? 
Well, me feel- I, I know, but my number one was high on your list for a preview list. Yeah. Number one? My number one. Yeah. The worst film I saw this year. Yeah, we might line up. Mm, interesting. Okay, why don't you go first? Number five for me. Really disappointing considering I normally expect a level of competence from uh, Walt Disney Animation Pictures, uh, Walt Disney Animation Studio. Ah, but it wasn't uh, that bad. We're talking about Wish. Element. Oh, I think it was going on. <laughs> no, Elemental was middling. It was okay. There's some moments. I guess Wish, however. Not Disney. Technically, it's Pixar, right? That's right. Disney uh, produced Wish, and it is not good. Directed by Chris Buck. Uh, he of Frozen and Fran Virhas. Vir, I don't know if you watch her name. So. It's her debut, uh, starring the voices of Anna DuBose, uh, Ariana DuBose, excuse me, uh, Chris Pine, Alan Tudyk, amongst others. 50% Rotten Tomatoes. I think that is exceptionally generous. Um, it is uh, convoluted and uh, half baked. And it, it's at once too complicated and not thought out well enough. It, it's it's a very frustrating film. Um, who, I forget who the listener was, whose daughter loved everything and said that uh, and said that uh, Kung Fu Panda Four was fine. Um, the, Tessa and I saw this in the theater, and she has never mentioned it, mentioned, brought it up at all once since we saw it. It did not land. And I imagine this will be uh, one of Disney's forgotten films. That is damning since she is the target demo. Yeah. Well, the, the girl power and like, you know, all the fantastical stuff, it should have been, it should have been, uh, you know, I should have landed squarely, but instead it was, uh, it was a big miss. Number five for me is a small movie and I kind of feel bad doing this, but you know, it got, it got a pretty good chance. Uh, it was pushed quite a bit and the trailer was, was great for the blackening. Uh, the blackening ultimately oh, the black uh, was okay. had so much more like uh, possibilities and potential and it just did not leave up, li- li- live up. And it was frustrating because it, it had so much going on, but just kind of fell off and didn't, maybe it was a, a sense of humor thing for me. Is and that I, the I, one with the, uh... Don't stick up for a movie and then ask which movie it was. <laughs> no, I want to make sure that I was thinking of the right movie. But I mean, there are some things that like I just didn't get, and maybe it is a cultural thing. Like uh, there's a a scene where so it's about the, it's a tr- it's a tropey movie. It's it's a, a a parody almost at times of these horror films where a group of friends go to an Airbnb, like which is a can a, a, a cabin out in the woods, and then uh, all these creepy things start happening. But first, it all it involves like, a saw like room. The movie saw where they go in, and there's a, an old creepy uh, racist board game called the Blackening, and and all. And, this is the one with the high school friend. And then there's high school friends involved, yeah. And there's, but it's like the one guy who was kind of an outcast. Yeah, yeah. And he's I like the. I like. I have. I. I'm an, I think that was my biggest. Myself. My biggest okay. problem was like the 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 main like nerdy guy who was pivotal yeah. the story. Just felt like he was doing some kind of SNL like character. Yeah, right? it was all caricature. It wasn't perfect by any stretch, but uh, this is an above average movie for me. Okay. Well, it was one of the. You ever you see this? I, I don't know. No, the tone was supposed to be like scary movie, right? It didn't. It like, no, oh, it's not a parody. That. It's played pretty straight. It is parody in, in, at times. No, sure. but this movie it's satire has, maybe, but it's it, not parody. There's difference between, and this is not a satire. This is not parody. This is I played guess, totally straight. Not totally straight. It better not be because that makes it even worse. It's like, played for oh, laughs, dude, but it's not. It's not scary movie. No, it's not that kind of film. Look, there was a lot there. There was a lot there. It just didn't live up to what I. It's was, like bodies, bodies, bodies. You, is in that vein. There, no, 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 no. This is much goofier than bodies, bodies, bodies. Uh, I, I was hoping for big things. I was very excited to go see this movie, and uh, it left me confused. Oh, I, I, I right. didn't think it was great, but this is a three star movie. Oh, uh, well, so we've heard. So we have heard. I don't think Brian minded it. I didn't. I think Brian probably saw it as like real he's like this is just how i how you know, i was great in this movie was Dieter Dieter bader it was fantastic Go ahead. the one white guy in the film Look, number, number four, four for, number four for me no. uh avery you might want to disconnect your headphones uh for this one because i disliked fast x oh. i was not entertained by fast x read about directed by lewis leteria uh 53 percent of on tomatoes i find that generous i did enjoy and continue to enjoy the one thing i'll think about this movie fondly is jason momoa as the uh the flamboyant villain um i enjoyed that 
he's outside. doing a lot of heavy lifting for the red, doing, that he, Rotten Tomatoes right. score. That's he's doing a lot of that. He, at least twenty five at fifty for 25 is him. Twenty five of those points uh, by himself. He's uh, fun and he is kind of a breath of fresh air on the screen from all the family. Family count in this movie, by the way, is seventeen. Seventeen times the word family is uttered. Uh, but uh, outside of Jason Momoa, this is a tough watch, man. I did not enjoy this. I I did I did a fun seeing it, but it, it's definitely one of the weakest ones. It's out. It's it's down there with two, eight, and then ten. It's I agree it's with you, but for me, that is a pretty low stand. Yeah, oh yeah, I I I completely agree. Movie but Momoa Momoa. Is, and if he you sang. never saw this, no, he sang. Why would I? No, for, Mo- for Jason Momoa. All right, here we go, guys. Oh yeah, next school wins. Huge disappointment. Oh, I understand man. the uh, tone at all. Did not get it. Uh, I realized that I thought it was funny. Next goal wins. You notice that I'm not doing credits and like spending a whole lot of time either because I'm sure. not trying to point out. Make the list, but I was disappointed by this. I can well. see a lot of people liking this movie. It just I was not one of those people. Like uh, there's 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 movies that the the comedy is like too adapt. Like I, I just can't access it because I'm not smart enough, Mr. Wes Anderson. I guess. And then there's uh, movies that are I go super broad, but it's like way too broad for me and not hitting the tone right. And I was frustrated, confused, and kind of agitated throughout the entire viewing experience of Next, Next Goal Wins. And I love a lot of this uh, person's movies. This is not one of them. Huge, huge miss. Yeah. Not not as bad for me as it was for you, but this was a pretty massive disappointment. I was angry. And you know what? I think... It might have something to do with Michael Fassbender as great as he is. He's in some movies where it's just like the movie doesn't work because he has such a a, a, a particular tone. And if it's not like reflected with the movie around it, like the snowman, the worst movies, and you can't quite put your finger on exactly what's going on with it. It's just a tonal issue. Has has any actor in their prime, now there's actors who've fallen off and, you know, slum out with whatever, any actor in their prime, a good actor, but in as many like headlined, Starred in as many bad movies as Fassbender. I mean, I'm thinking of two. Two what movies? Yeah, can you name like other? The Counselor. Oh, uh, three. I yeah. maintain the Counselor director's cut is fucking great. It's yeah, memorable, but I don't it think is a it's gr- good. It is a great you movie. You see the director's cut there. Bro. The director's cut is fucking. Well, I've great. seen the director's cut. No, you have not. All I right. have Brad Pitt's head comes off. Really? Oh, it's you great. just like the. Uh... Like you saw, like the uncut version. That's not the director. Uh, on uh, on uh, uh, no pun intended. What? Uncut. The Brad Pitt's head. Come you get out. it. Okay. What's your number? What's your number three, bro? I realize now that you haven't seen a lot of these movies. Like, for example, I don't believe you saw Blue Beetle. No, Brian. No. It was very bad. I, I'm. I mean, you have access to the same information that i do so why are you making well funny you mention that blue beetle checks in at 77 percent on rotten tomatoes so it got decent reviews but uh man this was uh this was a tough watch this is the one no oh, never mind this is a smash cut that's supposed to be a joke and i saw it coming a mile away it's just one of those things where mm, poor choices poor choices all around Don't Isn't know this why where, where somebody the two characters are supposed to be related and they're entirely different ethnicities. Yeah. There's a Brazilian actress that's uh, having real trouble with the accent. Um, it's a la- It was supposed to be a release on max. Uh, it was supposed to go straight to HBO max. And for whatever reason, they're like, Oh, this would be great in the theaters. It was not. And uh, <laughs> as such as my number three. Number three for me is a uh, movie that worked for a whole lot of people. Did not. Uh, I didn't. I could not. I could not. And possibly it's because I didn't see it in the theaters. And I'm not going to name the listener who uh, who assigned it. And I'm thankful for anyone who assigns us a movie. And I, I would have never seen Skinamarink if it wasn't for that listener. Oh, that was a tough one. Uh, but Skinamarink is a it, it's an experimental movie. I hesitated to even put it on the list and I, there's no way I would have if it wasn't a breakthrough. A lot of people love this movie. And hit, so that makes me angry because I don't understand it. If this was just a little movie that no one saw and no one talked about and I didn't like it, I don't know if I'd put it on the list. So that's a little peek into like my sure. no, my shortcomings, I guess. Like The fact that this movie was like uh, received with so many uh, accolades and people loving it makes, right. it makes, makes me it a target. worthy. Yeah, it's a target. Right, exactly. So uh, it's gonna rank is just I feel like even you, Brian, could probably make this like in a weekend for the most part. 
even I. Yes, yeah. uh, this movie is. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was a tough watch. And some of the voice, the the death knell, Brian was. There's so it's about a little. Wasn't this assigned to us? Yeah, and his little brother, and like uh, it's all shot on like beta, and it's all again very, very yesteryear. And I it did access some like weird like recesses of my brain where I remembered waking up in the middle yeah. of the, uh, very, very similar to like the backdrop and the wood paneling, and you know that era and, and being a star. I, I feel like a lot of this would have been effective if peppered into a narrative film, or if it was just like a twelve minute standalone short where mm -hmm. it was just like he was, you know, experimenting with the medium as it were. Right. And I did appreciate how like it did get me like it was almost like a dream and you wake up from the dream you're like oh my god I was just like I had a very real memory like very visceral memory of my you know eight year old childhood in the middle of the night wandering around but it it went on and on and on and then uh, there was also some kind of like demonic voice and I'm watching it going was there that that's like. That I bet you that's the director just trying to add an element and trying to move something along. And I looked it up after the movie was over, and sure enough, like the the because very few people were actually worked on this because it was like such a small. There's a cool story behind it too, but I mean, it was the director just trying to you know add a, a layer to it and voicing it himself, which yeah, it's neither here nor there. But the fact that I, 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 I you honed in on it so fast while watching it, yeah, it's just. So yeah, I I wish I could access this one. I can't. I do dumb, and it's number three on my list as a result. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's skip Amazon. I know you uh, you're, you're uh, up against it time wise, but it's only been five days, so let's uh, let's head up with a nice big fat one when we get back. All right, let's take a quick break. No, no, no need. Take a quick break, Brad. Well, to, to pay the bills, Brian. We we got to take no a need, quick break. no need. All right, no fine. Need. Let's work. We'll be right back. Break time. Come back. More bad movies next. Okay. All right, back, wrap up our list. You often refer Anderson to not being smart enough to enjoy a certain director's films. We're talking about uh Spiele, right? Or Michael Bay? No, far from it. Actually, uh much more of a heady director, writer, a tour. Talk about Wes Anderson. He made a movie last year. So far, I've not seen any of the four movies you've listed. Oh, you never saw Asteroid City? Why would I? I'm going to hate it. I tried to go to see movies to like them, not to hate them. My God. This this was full, look, like we're through the looking glass. We're now parodying Wes Anderson unintentionally. Like he's making his movies as a parody of himself. Is he just giving his audience what he thinks they want, though? Is he? Because that kind of. No, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. There were people in my theater that were enjoying this. Well, I, I imagine that they would, but I mean, do you get to a point where you're like, this is what they expect from me? And I, I, I would, I just, I wish that there'd be a different direction taken because he's going deeper and harder into his. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was, it was it, being spoken of fondly at the, the dinner party I was at last night. I have no <laughs> People better. were delighting in it. Hey, not to like that this, point. I don't, I don't like this out there because it just, it, it made, immediately like puts a riff between me and, and you know, whatever, like, and it's people that I like and like I, people I first meet and then, you know, movies will come up and they'll bring up Wes Anderson. I'm like, Oh no. Oh God. No. It Last does kind of feel like experimental jazz where it's, I, I can't, uh, I can't access it. And that's I'm, the thing. I'm, I'm repelled by it. I'm with you. I, Avery. Uh, I don't think that's the case. You say that, but I don't believe that's the case. I don't think it's yeah. the case. This is not experimental. This man is making the movies yeah. he wants to make. Like and this it, is intentional. Yeah. Uh, and, and to that point, cork. 74% last I checked the Rotten Tomatoes. This was well reviewed. I had such a hard time with this movie. Not enjoyable. And I'm sure there was a percentage of our audience, maybe more than half, that liked this movie. Uh, good for you. God, God bless. I, I wish I had what you had in terms of ability to enjoy things. But as it stands, this is the second worst film I saw this year. Hardcore cork. Exceptional cork. Did you laugh at all? Do you think he cracked smiles? No. What no, I get so most painful. upset about, it's like the style is one thing, and yeah, I get it. I, the style is not for me. But then also he gets these amazing actors and does nothing with yes. them. Yes. Robert Altman, have we seen such ensemble casts? But Robert Altman will put them through the fucking paces and have them like show their wares. And and it's almost like a power move. Wes Anderson's like, all right, Elizabeth Moss, you're going to sit there, look stern, and you have nothing to say. Just look at the camera. Very yeah, good. like it's almost like, he like has a, a roster that he's compelled to use. And it's like, I've got to find a wacky character for a Jeff Goldblum or for, uh, you know, for uh, Steve Carell or whoever it is. 
It's like he's collecting actors. He's like, look, I have them in my movie. Like it makes for a good trailer, an impressive trailer, I guess, with all those faces and names. But then, and then when he does get it right for a second, like he did with uh, the French Dispatch, mate, for me, or we're talking about my own. And I know I can hear people when I can hear people turning off their stuff. I get it. We're upsetting people because people love this man and his work. But like for for just to elaborate, because I can't help myself, like Benicio and in in French Dispatch, and and then it gets a good, and I'm like, okay, this is something I I'm, I'm accessing this. I like it. And then Benicio growls, and I'm like, he lost it. Now it's so silly. I can't even. I can't. Yeah, uh, the li- along and those are lines, losing their shit, laughing. It's like, it, but it wasn't. There, funny. there are constant reminders in this movie that you're watching a play. You know what I mean, or a movie, or what? It's impossible to get invested. I'm, I'm being taken out at every turn. It's like, I, I guess I know this is a movie, and we're, 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 we're making, we're making mirth. I can't, I can't get on board. Mirth. Hey, buddy, what's up? You All like right. One? I want to hear your number one. I oh, found your number two, actually. No, Atticus doesn't like Wes Anderson. Let the let the record show. No, you do not. Get out of here. I'm doing show. Go he on. Might be, he might not be smart enough. Yeah, I'm doing show. So go on, get. You can play hockey if you want. Okay. Sure, it's a special occasion. Uh, all right, number two for me, Brian. I don't know why you got to skip. This is gonna. This is controversial. People are gonna be very, very upset by this. I would imagine. Not everyone, but some people. And I still, I mean, maybe there's a world I can watch Colors of the Flower Moon again. <laughs> this is number two worst. <laughs> number two worst, Brian. I was wow. so goddamn disappointed in this movie, and just I'm I'm still continue to be flabbergasted at the fact that people found this riveting, compelling, or any. It's just it's exact. It's paint by number. Scorsese, it's exactly what you think is going to happen is happening. Sure, it's well acted. It looks goddamn gorgeous. I mean, it's, they, it's technically proficient. Like the everything music about is it, would imagine. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a sure it work. Well. All the best people in the business are working on it, right? And they have like a, a an unlimited budget. But as far as the movie goes and the story and the character, like, it was just, hey, look at white man, uh, it, it, taking advantage of these these rubes, these uneducated, uh, um, gullible. Uh, Native Americans. That's what it was for th- like three and a half hours. And well, I didn't dislike it as much as you. I found it very confounding that so many people who know their shit referred to it as a masterpiece. Was it another one of those things where I'm just not smart enough? We're not. We're not bright. That could be it. But I mean, they, I can see the proficiency, like you said. I see all that. Like that's that's not beyond me. It's not. But that's not what all you need to make a movie. Right. Yeah. And really, I think I enjoyed book, it the most. Apparently uh, the book actually right. follows the appropriate storylines, right? Like I, it, it makes it more compelling, right? Isn't that what you're telling me, Avery? Yeah, where it's it's from her point of view and there's more of a mystery to it, whereas the mystery sort of just immediately <laughs> tipped here. Uh, but I, I, I thought for me it was about three and a half stars. I liked it, but it was something that I, I really won't remember much of it going forward. It's a it, it, was, it was a movie. It should have been it should have been four and a half, five. So that's the funny thing about this list too. It's a three star movie, but yeah, like it it should have been a four and a half five star because of everything that had. It shown. should have been my number one. I was expecting this to be my number one at the end of the year when I just saw the trailer when I just heard of it. And it's a better movie than Skin Rink, but it's more upsetting to me than yes, Skin Rink. So that's why it's what it could have been is this greater departure from reality versus expectation. Anderson, you have not seen my five, four, three, and two. However, I, think, I have a feeling you've seen my number one. Right. In fact, I know you have because we talked about it. I, I was uh, wildly disappointed and then saddened by Fool's Paradise because I like Charlie Day. I wanted this film to succeed. I wanted it to be great. I wanted it to be fun. It would be funny. It was none of those things. It was a, it was a tough tough watch and a uh, sad experience because I don't know how often is Charlie Day going to be given the opportunity to write, direct, and star in a film. And a strong cast, right? Yeah, yeah. Ken Jeong, Kate Beckinsale, Adrian Brody, uh, Edie Falco, Ray Liotta, on and on and on. There's some big stars in this movie. Came out the same week as uh, Blackberry, too, which was interesting because you had the old uh, Glenn Howerton, uh, also of of, uh, it's always sunny, and they're kind of going head to head. And uh, I was way more excited for Fool's Paradise than I was Blackberry. Sure, April, same. one looked way better than the other. And yeah, well, it's my number one as well, Brad. So wasn't it on your list of most anticipated for yes. the summer? I'd have been, you know, second or third. But yeah, uh, it is my my most disappointed. The Revolties are more about disappointment than anything else. I think. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's a mix because, because Skinner Marink, I had no no anticipation of liking. I knew I was going to hate that movie. Yeah, a few of these I wanted to like. Which no, like, certainly I thought was going to be good. 
when you're going to see Asteroid City, though, you're not really. That's true. Some of them like Fast, although Fast X, while I didn't have high expectations, I was like, oh, this would be fun. It was fun. Uh, fun. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. that ball was practical, Brian. The ball oh. rolling through the city was a practical goddamn effect. See? You got me there. Pretty sweet. Um, what do the what do the people have for their uh, bottom five? Yes, the listener list compiled by the Goose. There were thirty seven different movies now made for worst movies of twenty twenty three. Here are all the movies with multiple votes. Mm. We had a a huge, huge three way tie uh, at number three with two votes each. We had Mafia Mama, The Flash, no, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Rebel Moon, Your Place or Mine, The Meg 2, Heart of Stone, Hypnotic, oh, save. And this is, this is heresy. Poor things. No. Hmm. Poor things. The listeners have let us down. Second worst movie of the year, according to the listeners, was You People. And the worst movie. Oh, is that a Netflix movie? Uh, Let's see. I feel like it was. It was, it was uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to distract you, Avery. Go ahead. Yes, it was. Uh, and the worst one, worst movie, uh, top of the royalty for the listeners is Blue Beetle. That was pretty bad. I personally was subjected to Hypnotic. Not a great movie. Pretty brutal to watch. <laughs> pretty unenjoyable. Didn't need to see Baffleck. And uh, my dad uh, subjected me to two back to back Baffleck movies. It was oh Air and Hypnotic. So, uh, He's hard to figure out. One one week it'll be let's watch Twelve Years a Slave, and then it'll be let's watch Hypnotic. I don't know what's the, going on with that. The guy. next week he's is like let's prep our taxes. He's, he's old. He's uh he's a man of a uh, varied interest. And uh, my other one, the only one worth mentioning, uh, was recommended by one of the co-hosts of the show. He told me it was a delight. Let's I don't know it. if it was a glowing review, but it there was a shine to it. Knock at the cabin. Oh, it was <laughs> a good movie. I have no problem with that. It was about as surprising as a dictionary. Where you knew but that's exactly why it's great the because there was, was no twist. Next. What was more surprising? I, that, I mean, that maybe that was the twist for that one because it was M Night Shaman, uh, Shaman. But what was more surprising was uh, the, the the lack of twists in in that, or the lack of twists in uh, in, in Killers. Of- uh, I what? think Killers was still probably more shocking. This was <laughs> no, you expected a twist. And knock was, at the cabin. It was exactly every syllable. That's why it was <laughs> great. I have no problem. With I felt like Anderson earlier in the show, where I felt like I had precognition, where it's oh, this is going to happen, and I, I saw. Have it no, I have no issues with this. This is I a fine like I felt like I was uh, using my own Lola machine. There are, there are a lot of movies out there where it just like it seems Ron like Weasley a is a money. racist trucker. There's a pile of money pushed towards a a group of people who have made uh, fast, and they're like, you have to do something with this with this money. And you have until this time, and it doesn't matter as long as you get some of that money back. That's all. That's, you think it was a tax write off? Uh, oh, I mean, it's just there's like zero passion in some of these movies that we have. Not not all of them. I mean, that's not fair yeah. to say about uh, some of the movies, but like Hypnotic looks like it's just passion free. The worst part of like Fool's oh, Paradise, for hypnotic. example, is that you can tell like it was passion, made with passion. I know, I know. You know what I mean? It's like you know it, that Charlie was, Day was up night, which makes it almost worse. And Charlie Day, I do believe, is a genius. I just think that maybe he was trying to, you know, pay too much homage to yesteryear's silent actor, and maybe he thought that he would become the modern day, you know, silent actor or be able. I don't know. I it just it missed it missed the mark in so many ways, from the score to the performance of the story to. The comedy, it's just, it's just I a- really wanted to make more movies. Like I'd like to see more from the mind of this man, but uh not, that. Is not like this. And I didn't hate it. It was just kind of like, like oh, my, really? my oh, mom might like this. It was just kind of oh. man, it was so it felt safe in a lot of ways. The Which worst could be part is offensive it, on its own. It thought it was that, whimsical. It's the bad kind of movie where I'm waiting for it to turn the corner for like an hour, yeah. and I realize, oh no, this is what it is. Yeah, like yeah. if you were to see us watching it, like we'd be leaning to the right, trying to see her on the corner. Yeah, like, run a steer. Is it yeah, is it coming? And then we're just kind of slumped. Yeah. It's, it's like watching your favorite team, and they're getting blown out, and you're going, yeah. "Oh, but maybe they'll oh, turn around yes. and come back." And they just, you go, "No, we're just going to get absolutely destroyed." Charlie Day, Green Man, rally suit on the entire movie, and it just never happened. Uh all right, let's get out of here. Let's rack it. Let's roll it. Gamble. Right. 
gambling or do we want yes, to do gambling yes. on the uh, no, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do gambling. Uh, last week we gambled on the American Society of Magical Negroes. Oh, did 50. it go up by 40 points? Andy guessed 54. Brian 70 with 50 reviews. The actual Rotten Tomatoes score is 30%. Yikes. Making Anderson the winner. Hey, your first chance to sign a film in question. No, no, we're way behind. So uh Manner of the Spring is a sequel to Jean de Florette's uh so we're not going to be watching that. Uh, I, I don't uh, think we can do that, Stephen. Stephen Morris is up. But I can, we can't watch a sequel there, Stephen. He's trying to base you on watching both. Diabolical. I thought... He knows what he's doing. He does. Son of a... We are so behind on the listeners list now. We have to start watching a couple of weeks, Brian. You're just going to you know, resign yourself to that. Well, fact. this is a good time because we're going to be off for a couple of weeks. I know, but I don't have any. I don't have any from the listeners because I have not heard from them. And I got to like individually go through each one and be like, hey, can you tell me which movie you would like to see? It's not. Right, gonna- well, in the meantime, <laughs> can you assign me a film? I don't. I don't know. Oh, boy. All right, d- take your time. But before you leave the country, uh, assign me a film. Like 12 hours. This week, we're going to gamble on the long awaited Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Mm hmm. So people are literally uh, being frightened to death. Tell Atticus to go. Make my guess for me. All right, I'm I'm ready. Uh, sure. No. On three. Yes. On three. Okay. One, two, sixty. Seventy-two. Anderson sixty-eight. Brian seventy-two. I. I'm now concerned both of you hit your head in the shower this morning. I was uh, almost going to go with 68, too. There are currently no reviews. Not a good sign for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I should have asked, but is Jason Reitman making the film? Uh, No, directed by Gil Keenan. Oh, he's good. I thought it was Jason Wright. I am not paying attention. Come on now, guys. Come there's, on, a, now. there's a really funny cameo by Bill Murray. The t- tall, dark, and horny. <laughs> oh, Ugh. it's it's just funny. This might not be good. It's gonna be great. He wrote uh, much of Afterlife, which kind of made me cry. All right, with a character uh, named the, Pod, uh... with named Podcast. That wasn't good. That that's not the part that made me cry. <laughs> okay, hearing about it made me cry. We have Brian. Right, can I be a character in a podcast? You know what? Watch The Promise Land, Brian. How about that? Yes, make him watch The Promise Land. That starting. That starting will be, even though I, you know what? I didn't give it a proper profession. I just, I, I, well, I wove it into uh, my Vaulties. So you're, watch, you're losing them. You're losing watch, them. Watch both. Um, <laughs> this was uh, art. excellent listener art. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, well, that's a little insulting to Mitch Burns, but it's funny. I wonder who made this. I looked up at the uh, credit. It's Mitch Burns. It so is, well done, Mitch. A little self-deprecating humor there. Uh, very funny, and uh, I, I enjoy the I enjoy the graphics. It's good. It's well done. Nice work. You can see enjoyable. that over at AndersonBrian.com. Rude, rude. Is that uh, that almost looks like a uh, Wes Anderson uh, still up there? Doesn't it? It does. I think it's a stock image, but uh, it looks. Why do you think that? Because it says Adobe stock on it. Is that maybe how you guess that it's a stock image, Brian? Where does it say that? Everywhere, all over the picture. Oh, Brian, Brian. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. I, to be fair, I, I'm looking at the preview on Gmail, so I can't, uh, all right. can't see that. But well done, Mitch. Um, yes, AndersonBrian.com is where you go to see Mitch's excellent artwork. Chris Burns, uh, thank you for being our feature artist this week. Check him out, AndersonBrian.com. Anderson, <laughs> hey, wait, already. Mitch did Mitch did the art to put down Mitch. That's pretty good. Yeah. I yeah, was concerned. I'm like, who did this? I hope this doesn't hurt Mitch's feelings. Thank God it was Mitch. That's exactly the, the journey I just took you through. Well, I don't listen. Okay. Chris Burns. I wonder if it's uh, related to Mitch Burns. But either way, Chris Burns, thanks for being our feature artist. Check him out, AndersonBrian.com. That's well, where the Amazon banner exists, Amazon link. Thank you for tapping that. Appreciate you. We'll come back. Next time we're together, he give you a nice fat Amazon list of purchases made. And right, it's right. Is either one. Sorry, we'll get back to that in one second. I, I'm switching. I'm switching, and uh, I want you to talk about this uh, documentary that 
uh, will be an enjoyable. Ah, enjoyable is not the right word, but we're both going to talk about the fire that took her. You should watch Best Starting anyways, because uh, The Promised Land fucking rules. All right, but we're going to be talking about the fire that took her streaming right now on Paramount. Okay. Speaking of which, you the should think that... about down down the road, watching Second Chance with Jillian is very good. She would actually like it. Hmm. Uh, that said, Anderson and Brian is Instagram. Anderson and Brian is a TikTok. The Film Vaults on Facebook. The Film Vaults on Twitter. The Film Vaults podcast on YouTube. Thanks to everyone who helps the show. <sighs> Looking at you, Giovanni Drake. Thank you very much. Mike Cole, doing double duty. Goose and Eric Kath. Appreciate you guys and all you do for the show. Idiot! Okay, you can't watch that because uh, you have to watch Best Started because you have to watch The Promised Land because we're about to uh, do that right now. So you don't have time to watch it in the next five minutes. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, that'll be seen by me, The Promised Land. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next time, uh, sayonara. We do it. Bingo.